Okay. So we have here, guys. Excuse me. Question ten. This is all about Pythagoras' theorem. Okay. So I'll just start off with question thirteen. When you're doing Pythagoras' theorem, Pythagoras' theorem only works for right angled triangles. You're not allowed to do Pythagoras' theorem when there isn't a guaranteed 90 degrees in there. You're not allowed to use Sokotoa unless there's 90 degrees in that triangle. We can see that there's a 2.5 and a 1.5 and A. Have to figure out what A is. What you do with Pythagoras' theorem is you get the longest side squared and it equals the other two sides squared and added together. Clearly in this diagram 2.5 is the longest side. Uh, then then it doesn't matter the order you put the other two in. So this one can be a, a squared and the other one can be a 1.5 squared. So let's use your calculator, square them out. You get 6.25 for that one. Uh, 1.5 for 1.5 I think is uh, 2.25. Yes it is. So you get equals a squared plus 2.25. Move the 2.25 over the other side. And what you'll end up getting is a squared equals 6.25 minus 2.25. a squared equals 4. The length of a equals 2. If you got any answer, if you got an answer bigger than 2.5, you know you're wrong because it has to be smaller than 2.5. Okay? Then the next thing they might try and trip you up with is uh, certs. So if I did the likes of question 16, okay? In question 16, it's actually exactly the same technique, except instead of using decimals, they're going to use uh, what are called certs. Okay? So once again, in question 16, which is clearly the longest side, using your eyesight? Root 29. Root 29 squared equals a squared, which is uh, 5 or x, whichever one you choose it to be, and then plus x squared. Multiply them out. You get 29, and then you get 25 plus x squared. Bring that over to your side. 4 equals x squared. Square root of x equals 2. Once again, if I got a number bigger than root 29, root 29 is roughly 5.5 ish. If I got a number bigger than root 29, I know it would be wrong. Okay? So we've done 13 and 16. Now moving on to the likes of 27, okay? Now, if Pythagoras' theorem, if this, is, this one's very important, this is probably the most important question in this exercise. If Pythagoras' theorem actually works, it guarantees that the triangle is right angled. So you can see that there's no, there's no guarantee, there's no right angle mentioned on these ones. We're assuming they are, but we don't know for sure. How would, how would we find out for sure? Use Pythagoras' theorem, and if it works for Pythagoras' theorem, it means it's got to be right angled. So I'll show you now. Take 27 part 1. The longest side is 10 squared. It equals 6 squared plus 8 squared. 100 will actually end up to be equal to 100. Because it balances, it guarantees that this triangle is right angled. Okay? If I was to do uh, part 3 as an example, 13 squared equals 6 squared plus 12 squared. 169 is equal to 36 plus 144. 169 is actually, uh, 169 is not equal to, uh, what's that, 180? So 160 <coughs> is not equal to 180. This means that this triangle in question is not a right angle triangle. Everybody alright with that? Yeah. Okay. Now, after that, they're going to go on to stuff about uh, parallelograms, the area of a parallelogram. You, you can, the area of a parallelogram is located in your tables. Okay? It's simply, uh, if you imagine a parallelogram, guys, a parallelogram is made up of what two shapes? If, if you're the. Okay, what, what's the what's the what's the uh, what's the area of a triangle? Half base, half base by height. So if you have two of them, if that's a half base by height and the other one is a half base by height, the full parallelogram is simply base by height. Now the one place, and please, if you're going to zone in for something, please zone in for this. 
the one place where uh, so many people mess up in two months time and I mean absolutely ridiculously so is that everybody thinks the H value is this if I said that's if I said that's 20 everybody thinks that's the H value okay and imagine I said that's 30 going this way 30 is definitely the base but 20 is not the height the height is actually determined by getting the distance between the two parallel lines that make sense so don't use the slant height use the vertical height so you'll see in these questions here and despite me saying that statistically speaking somebody will do this again okay now uh, give you this question 30 as an example okay I have to find out if I want to find out the area of this parallelogram it's going to be base multiplied by height it's going to be uh, 15 because it's 15 from here to here it's the same as this distance from here to here it's going to be 15 times height wherever height is I have to use figure out what height is using Pythagoras theorem because height by definition has to be at a right angle to the base okay so what you do is you say 13 squared equals h squared plus 5 squared uh, 13 squared is 169 that equals uh, that equals h squared h squared plus uh, 25 and uh, finally when you bring the 25 out of your side it's 144 equals h squared h equals well likewise you replace h with 12 and you can find out what the area is 15 times 12 is going to be once again 100 and 80. Okay, <coughs> so that's all the lot done there. And uh, I think that's pretty much me. For